Hello and welcome in this session on internship for B.Ed second year. Dear learners, you must be enjoying your B.Ed program and in second year as you all are aware that you have to complete a very important practical component that is called internship. The details of all the activities which you will complete during internship too have been given in the handbook for practical activities for B.Ed second year the QR code of that handbook is here, so you can download by scanning this QR code. In second year, as you all are aware that there are three main practical components, EPC courses like first year, there are two EPC courses in second year, then one internship about which we will talk in this session and a workshop of 12 days. So the internship too is a 12 credits, 16 weeks full time school engagement program you already aware that the internship one which you have completed in your first year was a four credit and was a four weeks duration but this internship internship two is of 12 credits and is of 16 weeks duration so dear friends this internship will help you to acquire the competency of undertaking multiple roles as a teacher with a complete understanding of a school age system and to undertake responsibility of planning and implementing teaching learning activities for specific units of study. This internship will help you to develop various teaching skills and competencies and positive attitude towards teaching to reflect upon and consolidate school experiences as well as foster your own development as a teacher and to develop a broad spectrum of perspectives on teaching as a profession. Dear learners, as you are expected to complete your internship at your internship school, which is your primary internship school or main internship school, that school should be any government recognized upper primary, higher or senior secondary school. If you are an in-service teacher, you may choose your own school for your internship purpose. The condition is that class 6 and onwards should be there in your school. Please ensure that the school in which you are doing your internship should have subject specific trained and experienced teachers to mentor your teaching practice and school based activities. If in case your school is not fulfilling the conditions that is not having the class six onwards or not having trained or experienced teacher to your mentor, then you have to look for a nearby upper primary, secondary or senior secondary school in your locality because B. Ed. prepares you for secondary and senior secondary. So please complete all your activities with at least upper primary, secondary or senior secondary classes. Please learner, before moving further, I just want to tell you a few important points that completion of internship is compulsory condition to attend workshop. If you will not complete your internship, you will not be allowed to appear in the workshop. You cannot do both internships in same year. Internship one should be done before internship two and for appearing in term and examination completion of internship is not essential condition. Generally we never allow to change the regional center or study center for the internship or workshop purpose. So whatever regional center or, or study center is with you at the time of admission please complete your internship activities within the jurisdiction of that RC and that study center. Dear learners, in first year also you have identified your mentors, your mentors will continue here and any senior teacher, any senior trained teacher of your internship school, a head or principal can be your mentor. You should identify the mentors for both teaching subjects. Your mentors will guide you, support you and help you in planning, organizing and providing feedback during your teaching practice and other activities to be undertaken by you during the internship. In second year also you have to complete two EPC courses like first year. These EPC courses are drama and art and education which is of two credit and understanding the self and yoga. This is also of two credit. As you all know that there are four activities in each EPC course. You have to complete two activities in each EPC course during your internship period rest two activities in each course will be completed during the workshop 
and the reports of the activities which you have completed during the internship period will be submitted at program study center during the workshop two in internship two the first activity is preparation of unit plans you have to prepare unit plans in both teaching subjects how many unit plans we have never suggested the numbers then the second activity is planning of the lessons and practice teaching in which you will develop the lesson plans which you have planned in your unit plans and do your practice teaching then development of learning resources in each lesson you are developing certain learning resources so for assessment purpose you need to submit non digital means the conventional as well as digital learning resources as well as digital learning resources then development and administration of assessment tool you need to develop assessment tool for a scholastic area and course scholastic area in both the teaching subjects then planning and conducting a parent teacher meeting because you will be there at your internship school for four months so it is expected from you that you conduct at least one ptm during your teaching you organize some co-curricular activities at your internship school and also you organize one week community service campaign where you can do a survey of local community as well as you organize any social or community service campaign so there are basically seven activities which you need to complete during your whole internship period in second year the first activity as i told you is the preparation of unit plan we have already developed a video program on it so you can go to the youtube and there is a 30 minute video uh, which you can watch before planning the unit plan the link of the video is given in the slide you need to identify the units for both the subjects you select adequate number of units from the syllabus of the subject for developing unit plans leading to minimum of 20 lessons so in each subject please identify the units from which you can develop minimum 20 lessons and you prepare unit plans of only those units from which you will prepare your lesson plans you select a unit or chapter you divide it into subunits, formulate learning objectives, then you develop instructional procedures for each unit, you plan and prepare evaluation question and also the questions for the unit test. And the format, how to make unit plan is already given in your practical handbook for B.A. second year, so you can follow those guidelines. Next activity is planning of lessons and practice teaching. The units on which you have developed the unit plan, you need to select the topics from those units only for preparing your lesson plans. You need to deliver total 40 lessons, so 20 lessons in each subject because you have two pedagogy subjects. You inform about your schedule of teaching practice in advance to your program study center so that they can arrange the observers for the observation of your teaching practice. It is also expected from you that the lessons which you will prepare or you will deliver all lesson plans should be approved by your mentors in advance you have to ensure that minimum 30 lessons mean 15 lessons in each of the two subjects are observed by your mentor and minimum 10 lessons means five lessons in each subject are to be observed by the supervisor a supervisor who is a teacher educator appointed by your program study center when you are doing this activity you have to prepare lesson plans in a separate registers. You prepare two registers, register one for teaching subject one and register two for teaching subject two. And you write first your unit plans of the previous activity in those registers. Then your lesson plan should be written in the same register. Your lesson plan should be available with you while you are delivering the lesson in the classroom. You should develop or arrange appropriate teaching learning resources, teaching learning aids to present your lesson meaningfully. Dear learners, your all lessons will be supervised and commented upon by the mentors or the supervisors using the teaching assessment scale. The teaching assessment scale is given in your handbook. So you should make the copies of that teaching assessment scale and make these available to them. You attach one TAS with one lesson plan. The TAS is given in your handbook as I have told you and all the comments will be given by your mentors or the supervisors on TAS only. Next activity is developing the learning resources. So you are expected to develop your learning resources, some digital resources, some non-digital resources. So what you do, you identify best four resources during your teaching practice, at least two digital and two non-digital. 
you share those resources with your students with your mentors and improve those resources even after using them then in during workshop 2 you need to bring those teaching learning material you please keep in your mind that in both the teaching subjects at least one digital and one non-digital so two to tlm are to be submitted during the workshop the next activity is development and administration of assessment tool this is also a very important activity you need to identify the objectives and suitable types of tools that you intend to develop in a scholastic and course scholastic area you are expected that you develop at least one tool in a scholastic and one tool in course scholastic area please prepare blueprint for both the tools you develop the draft tools administer it on few students collect feedback and improve your tools then the final tool you develop you administer these tools on the students and interpret the test results by using appropriate statistics and graphs and a report of around thousand words including description of the steps followed by you in developing the tools as well as interpretation of the test results will be submitted by you during the workshop so the next activity is planning and organizing parents teacher meeting you have to organize a ptm at your school because you will be there for around four months so in parents teacher meeting you can share the academic progress of the students based on the classroom observation because you will work there as a teacher you can discuss about the students assessment based on the portfolio or assignments or the test results you can even learn from parents and guardians so that you can be better informed about a students strength needs behavior and learning style you can discuss certain enrichment or intervention strategies to support students learning when you are planning and organizing a ptm it should be planned and organized in a systematic way you prepare a report of around 750 words to describe the steps followed by you in conducting ptm the points discussed during the ptm and things which you have observed during the ptm even you can use the pictures photographs of that PTM, the invitation which you have sent to the parents. The next important activity is organizing co-curricular activities. As you know, co-curricular activities are the part of your teaching learning. So you can plan any two CCAs, any two co-curricular activities. You discuss with the school principal and your mentor and seek their cooperation in organizing activity. You can organize the CCAs during the time when your principal allow you then you collect feedback on the effectiveness of these activities from the mentors from other colleagues in the school and your students and reflect how you have organized the cca then the next activity is organizing community service campaign so in this activity you can plan any one community service campaign you can discuss the plan with the school principal your mentor Please prepare a suitable checklist, interview or observation schedule to be conducted during the survey in your local community to collect the data on selected issue. Then you organize the community service campaign with the active involvement of your students. You please evaluate the activity by collecting feedback on the effectiveness of the campaign from the mentor and the students and reflect your experience of organizing community service campaign in form of reports which you need to submit during the workshop. This is just a summary of activities, the records which you will submit. So the lesson plan and unit plan will be the part of same notebook. Then you need to develop some learning resources and their reports with the TLM should be submitted. Then you need to develop and administer the assessment tools. You plan and conduct a parent teacher meeting. You organize co-curricular activities and you organize community service campaign. So this is just a summary and don't forget you need to maintain a reflective diary on daily basis from day one of your internship to the last day of your internship whatever activity you carry out you need to write your reflections in the diary or this diary shall be submitted along with all the reports during the workshop so dear students keep enjoying keep learning become a better teacher thank you very much